Hey folks, welcome back. I'm out here in the Middle Fork, Snoqualmie River Valley wilderness area again. Um, it is moody as heck out here today. There's been some snow overnight in the higher elevations. Uh, some rain kind of continues off and on today. Um, I'm hoping to just come out and catch a few pictures. I don't really have any other plan than that. Um, I was on the way to what's called the Sitka Spruce area. I'll tell you a little bit more about that when I get there and stopped when I saw some trees, which is some nice white bark up here. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of mist coming through. Might be a chance to capture a photo or two, I don't know. But I thought I'd come back. Um, light's kind of flat today too. Uh, there's a little bit of directional light. It gets a little bit later into the afternoon but as the clouds come and go. It either goes flat, a little bit of direction. So we'll see. It's also a little bit of color left in the trees. It's mid-November. Super, super shocking to see so much color out today. Uh, still, this late in the season, I think it has a whole lot to do with the hot summer we had. So, well, thanks for coming back to my channel. Really appreciate it. Let's go see what's out here in the Snoqualmie River Valley together. Hey folks, I've stopped at this stand of trees a half dozen times, keep looking for a composition, maybe the right light, see some sun coming out over here now. And I have just not been able to find it. I love their white bark against the green background, but I just can't get a composition out of the mess. And maybe a little bit of fog would help, maybe something else. But I've been here about 15 minutes, just looking at this stand of really beautiful trees. Um, but I can't seem to get a photo out of it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back to the car. I'm gonna drive about another mile down the road where the Sitka Spruce are supposed to be. Um, tell you a little bit about those when I get here. So thanks for coming along. I've driven down the road, it was about a half a mile from where we just were, just crossed the Middle Fork Snoqualmie, and I've gotten onto the Sitka Spruce Trail, but as you've seen, to cross this trail, I need to make it past that. I don't see an easy path that isn't about getting my feet wet, and I have left my boots back at home. So I think I'm gonna pass today, as much fun as that is. Um, what you will see, and I think is kind of cool, is right here, you'll see the clay layer. So this whole area of the Middle Fork was below a glacial lake. And so the lake kept bringing debris and small sediment down from the mountains around during the last ice age. And they deposited this clay layer here at the bottom of this glacial lake, 17,000 years ago, I believe. I'd have to double check. And what has happened is, is as a result of that, there's a whole different set of species of trees that grow here in the Middle Fork Snoqualmie, specifically the Sitka spruce, which is normally closer to the coast here in Washington. Um, Douglas firs hate this sort of clay soil. They want well-drained, sandy soil. And that's what we have on all the higher elevations up and down the Middle Fork and throughout the Cascades. But here in this little spot of a few square kilometers, a few square miles, is this clay and Sitka spruce grow here. And they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, there's another place about a mile and a half up the road we've been to before called Oxbow Lake. I'll put a link to it here in the show notes. And 
Uh, I think instead of getting my feet on this, I'm gonna go up to the Ox Oxbow Lake Loop. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Instead of getting my feet wet in this, I'm gonna go up to the Oxbow Lake Loop and we're gonna try it out. It's all gravel and super easy to get around and there's plenty of Sitka spruce up there too. Hey, welcome back. I'm on the uh, Oxbow Loop Trail. I can't decide if this is plan B or C. And the first stop wasn't really planned. I was really coming, looking for some of these giant old spruce trees uh, that grow in this uh, clay pan soil. So we're gonna call this plan B. Uh, you can see this trail's a little bit different. They've uh, uh, done a lot of investment in this trail to make it easy to walk on the clay that sits underneath of it and such. Um, I did get back to my car and discovered I did have my boots with me. They were not at home. So if I decide I need to get a little muddy or out into some water, I think I'm all prepped for now. So let's go enjoy this beautiful trail together and see if we can find a photo or two to make. Hey everyone, I'm still making my way around this loop. Tell you what, I'm gonna be really honest with you. I am still learning how to work these woodland scenes. I have walked into the forest a few times already and down by the river and nothing just catches my eye. There's just so much junk on the floor floor here. It's really, really hard for me to figure this out. I'm, I'm working at it. I will get better by practice. But I have yet to get the camera out of the bag and I'm just going to assume that that's me and not this beautiful scenery I'm in. Uh, so, hmm. tell you what, we're just going to keep, keep walking around this, this loop uh, and uh, see what we can find. Thanks for joining along in this non-photographic journey <laughs> expedition of some, hey, man. These forests are awesome. And I find them super difficult to photograph. Um, I was walking around the trail. I'm almost back to the trailhead. I was just kind of like, I guess I need a plan C. Um, but I felt like I needed to get one in the can too. And that's what I wasn't doing. So I spotted this, uh, which you can see just behind me here, this curved log that goes up and it goes out this direction. And there was a fern right here below it. So I've made a little composition with it. Um, there's still a bunch of stuff in the background. I'm trying to not get the light um, from the sky behind it. I think I'll have to do a lot of dodging and burning uh, to kind of bring the focus to the log and to this fern that's in front of it. So uh, let me show you that. And uh, if it's any good, I'll show you the photo. Okay, here's the composition. Uh, you can see it kind of looking down the camera here. Um, except I've got it in a vertical orientation. So I'm trying to get um, the curve of the limb in it and the uh, pointing pieces of the fern. It kind of makes almost like a V upwards, um, almost parting the leaves in the background. I'll do a lot of dodging and burning on this uh, to bring your eye to the, uh, to the top of the limb here, and to these ferns that are growing out of the tree, this fern on the ground make the back kind of drop away a little bit. Um, I've pointed as far down as I can. I'm trying to not get the uh, background. It's super white. There's actually some like mist moving in. It's really promising. Um, so might have to dodge and burn some of that out too uh, to kind of clean it up. I am overexposing uh, a bit, actually right on exposure. Uh, it helps move my histogram this direction. I will probably take, um, two or three photos here um, really I think there's a lot of like kind of short depth of field between the front of this fern and see what the focus says oops we'll take it anyway uh, all the way to the back I'm at f8 uh, maybe I can get a one exposure okay I'm gonna go take those they're good I'll show you the raw images and I'll show you what I processed okay so one other thing I'm going to do before I make an image is I'm going to stick this polarizer on, try to get some of the reflection 
out of the uh, out of the water that's on the moss. So that's without polarizer, and that's with polarizer. We'll just kind of turn it here and change. I don't know if you can see it. It's really really subtle. Crank that exposure back up. It's a little subtle, uh, but it does cut down on some of the reflection uh, in the leaves in the background, kind of saturates everything. There we go. Okay, so this looks like 10. I'm focusing uh, F8. Looks like a one second exposure. There's not much breeze, so that should be okay. Okay, zoom in, check focus from top to bottom. So it's super sharp, or at least sharp enough for what I'm going for today. See, there's still a little bit of um, glare in those leaves. I think I'm okay though. So we'll go all the way up. Double check that these ferns are kind of tack sharp here. Um, wish there wasn't this grapevine laying in it, but I think it's just part of photographing out here in this forest. You know, it looks uh, looks perfect here. It looks a little overexposed on my uh, my phone, but I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna take a few more, just slight inch here, wrench there, and I'll show you the best of them. Thanks for joining me today. I think that's going to pretty much end my photographic outing. Um, sometimes you do a great job, you get three, four good ones. Uh, I'm not so sure about that last one. It was great getting out. Uh, really appreciate everybody that's made it this far through the video and through all my other videos. Um, if you uh, liked what you saw here, including the struggles, plan A, plan B, plan C, appreciate you get a thumbs up, the comments down below. If you want to see more of me making my way around the Pacific Northwest and specifically the Snoqualmie Valley, which is really near where I live, so super convenient, uh, hit the subscribe button. Make sure to turn that bell on so you get alerts when I post a new video every week. So with that said, I think the rain's going to start coming in, and so I am going to head to my car and head home. Thanks, folks. Bye for now.